Hello, everybody watching this video. I'm Christine Senecal, and I'm going to give you a lecture on the Black Death. In the time of the 5th, 14th century, this was actually called the Great Death. It got its name um, only after the couple, first couple years passed, but because that's what we call it, I'm going to continue calling it in this lecture. This is the worst plague known in history. So as hard as our lives are today, I'm hoping that by the end of this lecture, you're gonna realize that um, in perspective, history can give some comfort knowing that things have been much, much worse and um, hopefully you'll find it really interesting, as I do as well. You could print out the first slide. I'll make the PowerPoint slides available separately because that's how a good way to take notes might be for you. I'm gonna begin with the, the uh, talking about the pandemic of, and the bubonic plague from a scientific perspective, um, noticing where it came from, noticing its place in history, and the effects that it actually has on human physiology. And then from there, I'll talk about Europe in the middle of the 14th century, talking about why it was so particularly hard hit by the plague. We're gonna move into other aspects that you can see on the outline, but we'll get started by just talking about what we know about the plague in history. So I'm gonna show you a slide right now of the history of pandemics. You can see this is posted on World Economic Forum's website, and I give the credit below. And I just think it's really interesting because they do a kind of visual size and year of various pandemics in history. And of course, we know that COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 is a viral plague and it affects uh, the respiratory system mainly. In the Yersinus pesti Yersinia pestis situation, that is the Black Death, this is a bacterial infection. And um, it had a lot of different ways of affecting the health of uh, populations, which I'll go into. But um, you can see this like kind of like Spanish flu is another really big one in the early 20th century. We can see AIDS as another really also horrible one. Smallpox also. But um, the bubonic plague takes the cake, unfortunately. Here's another kind of um, visual for you. You can see, now the best estimates are between 75 and 200 million people dead. It's um, sad that we don't know the numbers even more, but you know, just knowing those numbers is enough to make it really the worst pandemic in history. It was a plague that went across Eurasia in the 14th century. So it affected Egypt, the Middle East, China, Russia, and of course, I'm gonna be focusing on the Western Middle a European Middle Ages. So this was a, a horrific event that not only in, um, impacted people from 1347 when it first hit to 1349, but it came back again and again and again. And in many places, populations just left and never came back. Other places, populations were so reduced that it took a couple hundred years for pre-plague um, populations to come back. It changed the whole landscape, cultural, economic, um, religious, and we're gonna talk about that. Well, I wanna look at um, a couple times in history just to notice when the plague took uh, effect. Recent history has, uh, or historians have been able to use DNA sampling to tell a lot about this bubonic plague or rather the, the, the Black Death, um, and notice that it has affected in different times. So Neolithic graves seem to have been um, affected by this uh, Yersinia pestis. So that's interesting. More on that, I'm sure, will come out as genome sequencing becomes more available. The Justinian plague of uh, the sixth century was something that also was really important for impacting world history. And in my early medieval European class, I talk about how although Western Europe collapsed politically in the fourth century, it's really not until Justinian's plague later that the population levels really tank and then don't go back up. So if we look at this visual, you, I, it's, it's here, you can see the plague of Justinian in the sixth century, and that's, that's quite bad. It's this same exact disease that comes back in the 15th century, or sorry, the 14th century, and 15th too, tragically. 
So I want to talk about um, how that goes. Here's a just a picture, a visual of um, this is the uh, 14th century. It's a manuscript, and you can see death choking the life out of a person. Uh, you know, this kind of visual was everywhere once the plague hit because death was so pervasive. Statistics um, are now saying that probably a half of the population of, of Europe was killed in this 15th, 14th century outbreak. It could have been um, between like a third to even 60%. So I know that these figures do matter. It matters when your neighbor's dead or when not dead. It matters that 10%, but we just don't have the tools to definitively say those numbers. Regardless, between a third and a half of the population dead is really, really bad. And um, so I want to just show you, this is a, a site from um, Toulouse in France, and this is some, um, some skeletons that were laid out. There's many different plague pits that have been excavated. And very recently, scientists um, did some analysis of the genetic material of, that was still available in these skeletons and found that indeed this bubonic plague of the 14th century is the same plague that is still around today. Earlier historians had wondered, hey, was it anthrax? Was it something else, two things combined? Because why did it hit Europeans so badly in the 1300s when in other times like now, it doesn't? And there's a lot of reasons for this, I'll go into them, but we just know now because of science that it is in fact the same plague. This plague um, has been able to be understood even better in a very recent study. You can see here, um, I'm sorry that the visuals aren't great, but if you look, you can see that to uh, the east, there's this settlement that a recent paper came out with and um, suggests that there was a kind of one point of entry um, for the plague. And I'm going to actually cite this paper. The Russian town is called Lyshevo, and it was um, a DNA sequencing study of 38 victims from nine different sites, so that this particular strain of Yersinia pestis entered from just one entrance point. And I think that's interesting to show in light of what we're going through now, when we're talking about social distancing and why it's so important, knowing that that one point of contact can be the thing that then has a snowball effect is relevant to today's society. So that's not to say that Western Europe got it from that Russian village. This study shows sites that show how it started in maybe Eurasia maybe coming from China, but really this focal funnel point through, excuse me, Russia to other points west is a recent thing. Um, the plague, of course, was passed by fleas on rats. So it turns out there's probably a couple rats involved and these fleas infected these two different rats and it seems like one bunch they killed and another bunch they, um, that they like the rats lived and so working together in this really horrific um evolutionary like sharing of different patterns the the rats that had the fleas that survived would reinfect and retransmit the more common rat that then would have gone around to Europe and um, infected the fleas on those rats would have infected the population. Once the fleas bit you, you would get um, the kind of version of the plague, I have it here, and I, I, I'm gonna say this wrong, it's with the bubos. So this is where we get the word bubonic. So this is one of three types of the expression of the, of the Black Death that occurred. The bubos would infect the lymphatic system. Um, there would be necrosis of the flesh. The, um, there would be swelling. And uh, a lot of times the death uh, was maybe 80% of the population that got it, and it would happen between eight and 10 days. However, it seems as though people could get better, at least with that. So um, that's some, some Chinese news with that, haha. <laughs> I wanna talk about um, the this, how it was experienced by a couple of people that were from the Middle Ages. So, um, I'm looking for, excuse me, I'm gonna put it on pause and find my quotes. 
because that's important. Sorry, whoops. I'm gonna um, stop this video here and then um, start it in another spot. So I'm gonna be probably delivering batches of videos. I just wanna make sure that I um, uh, don't overload the system with too much um, content. So uh, you can look at video number two.